What's going on everyone? It is Andrew back in with another video and in this one today we have this coming out from Rainbow Six Esports. Uh, this just came out like a couple hours ago, but it says an update on the Six Invitational with additional safety measures for all four teams or all four regions including uh, the Brazil teams to enter uh, France and all their stuff and wildcard still can't come to the Invitational only because they're in Australia and no one's allowed to leave or enter that country. So that's pretty much it. They released this massive article right here. We're just gonna break it down and kind of go through and give some of my thoughts on it and what I think is gonna happen. And then we'll, you know, eventually we'll make a predictions video for the May edition. But as they say right here, since, you know, delay. So it starts May 11th this year or in May. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and that goes right here. So the French government has allowed all six Brazilian teams to qualify for the six invitational to enter France and join the event. So I would imagine they pushed hard for this because if you take seven teams out, that's like half your event right there, including wildcard and six Brazilian teams. So I'm guessing they really pushed hard, but probably they have to do more quarantine or whatever and more like regulations as it says, including a negative uh, PCR test less than a uh, holy, I can't read 36 hours for the flight. And then you got to do a 10 day quarantine period. I think that's for every team too, the 10 day quarantine period, but they got to do a little more or whatever. Cause I think they banned travel uh, between the two countries. So I think that's what happened. So, and then they pretty much talk about all 20 teams right here. So wildcard gets like, they get like $30,000 I think for not going to show up. So as you can see, all, these are all the teams. The only thing that changed is El Tior is now uh, Parabellum right here. Cause there was like an org uh, situation that happened. So that's the only really thing that changed. All the organizations are the exact same. Uh, as you do see roster changes right here, pretty much what this is saying is whatever team you qualified with the Invitational is and you made changes, those people still deserve their money because they qualified for the event. So that's pretty much what that is saying. So the money's going to be split up like crazy, especially for some teams like FaZe, for instance, and uh, MIBR, which like drop their whole rosters. So the money is going to be crazy. But um, as you can see, it's still the same spot. Um, so only the playoffs will be, I guess, at the at the event. And it says group stage players hotel behind closed doors. So I don't really know what that means. I guess they're playing in hotels. So I guess you got to do good enough to get to the LAN event or something like that. I don't really know, bro. Plus the group stage is the 11th to the 16th. And then the playoffs is 19th to 23rd. We'll go over the format, all the teams competing and all that stuff later in the video. And then they go over like some health and safety. So all the 19 teams and the four main regions that go into this event, uh, they're going to have to, you know, do all the stuff as they say right here for health guidelines in France and all that stuff. So as you see before the event, this is for everyone, uh, by the way, a minimum of a seven day isolation period for highly recommend before departure. So I guess that would start somewhere now because you gotta be there by the 11th to play and you gotta do that before. So I imagine sometime soon. Uh, do I agree with that? Not really, but, and this is recommended, it's not even for, so last time tsm flew out with what like four days left of the event until it got canceled so i mean i don't even know if teams are going to follow this to be honest but for brazilian teams they got to get the negative pr test which we already said and then the 36 hours so and they continue right here uh you know 72 hours before departure so here it says uh in coordination with the french uh stuff during the 14 day period to the flight to france for the players um, all these countries must not travel to the US, Canada, or Brazil. So I think travel is like banned, maybe. I'm not really sure what that is meant to say. But yeah, pretty interesting. So as we go right here, players and, and, and uh, guidelines during the event. So you can only bring six uh, people. So you can only bring six guys. So it means you have your five guys and your coach, who will have to sub in if someone gets COVID, which we will talk about. Or it's probably should be your five guys and a coach. I doubt they bring a sub. Unless, like, you don't have a coach, um, then you might bring a sub in or just a player. So that could be a possibility. But each team's only bringing six guys, so you're not bringing a lot of people um, to the to the event. That's pretty much the whole thing. And then, you know, they talk about the quarantine stuff and what the players got to follow, the site guidelines as well. If you want to pause the video and read any of this, I mean, you're, we're not going to be at the event, so we don't really, you know, know. But they're just saying for the players to be safe. And this is mainly for the players, to be honest, so they know what is going to happen same like this you want to read anything but this is the interesting part so it says if a player tests positive for COVID-19 before traveling to France the designated coach or sub can replace them in the competition 
So that's pretty much what I just said, pretty basic, but this is the really thing that sucks. If two or more players test positive before traveling to France, the full team will be removed from the competition. See, that doesn't make sense to me. Because if you get a before, then you could just get your analyst or your sub or your coach. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't really make sense to me. I don't really understand that rule, but... And this is before, too. You're not even at the event yet, so I don't really know. And then here we go. If your coach tests positive during the event, he won't be replaced during the event. That's what they're saying right there. I don't know. Really interesting rules they have here. Obviously, it's going to be different because it's a new year, but... And then they're just saying, you know, sanitize, all that good stuff. Um, if a Brazilian player tests positive, we're out of France. I think they get uh, their full team will be removed from the competition. So same thing, yeah. And then they attend in quarantine. So that's pretty much it for the whole COVID stuff. I mean, hopefully no one gets uh, COVID. That will really suck. And, you know, this is a major event. You know, this is like the biggest event in Rainbow Six. So, you know, you never know. But people might say this is scuffed too if teams get disqualified. So last, uh, the last cross region event was the last six invitational, which is kind of crazy to think about. But so we got 19 teams for this, and here's what's going on. So they they actually announced this. This is live, but that's how they broke it down up there. But the, yeah, this is already live. It's just, uh, wild card was in Group B, but they can't go anymore, so they're not in there anymore. And this is off the 2020 uh, SI point standings. Obviously, we already got the 2021 stuff going on. But yeah, this is what's happening for this. So group A will play nine games, group B will play eight because wild card's out. And there's all best of one round robin games. I think we're going off the new format too. Um, I, th I, th I think we are, I'm not really sure though. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know if we're doing the overtime stuff yet or we're just doing the six six draws, but that's pricing we'll see and they'll explain later, which I would imagine. And then obviously we got the double elimination bracket for playoffs. So we'll explain how you, you know, get to the playoffs in a bit. But, you know, as they explain right here, uh, best of five, upper bracket, uh, with a map advantage to upper bracket team with unlimited over time, which is interesting to do the map advantage. They never did that before. And invitational, here's how the money works, same as last year, $3 million on the line once again. And then it's broke down like this. Uh, wild card gets 30,000 because they, you know, aren't able to uh, participate. Here's the schedule. So stream A, the main Rainbow Six stream, uh, you're gonna have all of these matches. Um, there are some, there's a lot of good matches in here, I'm not even gonna lie. This is gonna run through the whole day. And this is uh, European Central time. So you gotta keep that in mind. Um, I'm over in the East Coast of the US. So I think it's like a six hour difference for me. So I think the first match kicks off at like 9.30 in the morning or like eight o'clock. I'm not totally sure, but yeah, it's, it's pretty early on and it goes through pretty much the whole day. So that these are the first couple events or the first couple days of the event. And I think if it's blue, you're in group B. No, that's wrong, because that game plays. I don't know what these are for, but I thought they were for something, I guess not. And this is stream B. So the stream B is just Rainbow Six Bravo. You can look it up on Twitch. And these are all the matches for all these. So if you want to pause the video, we're going to go over them later, obviously. If you want to pause, so you want to write down some of your favorite matches or whatever. Like, there's some good ones in here, like the TSM Space Station would be good. Um, let's see if we can find any others. Yeah, I think the cross regional like phase G2 might be good. They have gone back to um, Like I think BDS liquid might be good, you know liquid Empire, you know DZ probably gonna play some good teams like DZ uh, G2 right there like a lot of these will be pretty good But and obviously we have the stream B matches too. like Empire BDS will be good. Those will always go BDS phase clip will probably be good um, Let's see if we can spot like VP TSM uh, you know, Nip TSM, like th these will be some good matches we got, but the playoff information, I guess, is coming soon. We already saw the official merchandise, the jackets at $150, kind of a rip off. But here's everything you could watch. So, if you're an English, you know, viewer, you have the YouTube channel, which all the games will be posted to. We have the main Rainbow Six channel, which is Stream A, and then the Bravo, which is Stream B. And then you got the same in every other language, pretty much. So, Portuguese. Uh, the YouTube channel, we've got the German stuff, the Spanish stuff, Latin Spanish, I guess it's different. Uh, French, obviously, Italian, Russian, Japanese, and South Korean. And then, so all the English stuff will be throughout the whole event. I guess for only playoffs, uh, we'll have a Polish, Dutch, Hungarian, Thai, and Mandarin as well. So that's pretty much it on this article uh, that they posted. If we go over to our friendly Liquipedia page, and we go to the overview right here. So wildcard can't compete. So if you look at the breakdown, uh, they do get $30,000 for not going to be there, which does kind of suck for them. 
but the event must go on as they say so they're dq'd and this is how the playoff bracket works so if you get top four you're in winners winners round one and then if you're bottom four you start in losers round one so this is how the whole bracket will break down so you gotta you know it's kind of like it's kind of like cod champs is what i said i think a while ago but yeah so you want to get out in this winner's bracket these games are really important because especially now that you got a one map advantage in the in the grand final so you got a really good shot of winning if you come from this winner's bracket and that's that's gonna be the big talk i think throughout this whole group stage is who can get out in this winner's bracket especially with this group b because you got like a guaranteed chance to even go to the playoffs pretty much as long as you don't suck because wildcard is not here um according to liquipedia i guess we're using the overtime stuff i'm not really sure about that though and as we if you go to the group stage on liquipedia and if you don't know what liquipedia is it has every esport like we click this it's got every fucking game known to man this is really how you get all your stuff but here we go so two round robin formats you know 10 teams all that good stuff bo1s best of ones and this is how it breaks down for every single day it's got a split up in groups so the first day may 11th is all group a matches and then may 12th all group b matches and it just goes back and forth like that pretty much the whole event so we will kicking off with the group a matches which are look how many fucking matches are like look at this so as you see this is 6 a.m actually i was wrong 6 a.m eastern for me and the last match what is that uh what is that like six no that's 6 30 i think no nah. 4 30 it ends for me so i mean there's matches all day like all day round matches so that's pretty good to see um obviously there's less in group b i think because wildcard's not here but yeah so we're going to be doing our predictions video our redone predictions video for the may uh for the may event because there's been a lot of roster changes i mean we could just look here look how many roster changes has been made so there's a lot of stuff that uh we're going to talk about we're going to talk about all the roster changes the success of some of these teams that are going into their uh that went into the 2021 season and all that kind of stuff so we're gonna break that down i'll probably have pretty different predictions since i watched a lot of the um a lot of the games all the matches uh over this stage one so if you guys did enjoy this video though make sure to like comment subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one peace out everyone